Hello everybody and welcome back to Learning at Home with Mrs. V. All right, so we've been talking about subtracting and adding um, mixed numbers and we've, find, we've been able to find common denominators and we've been able to go through those operations and follow the steps. But now there's one more piece to the puzzle with the subtracting. We also have to do some regrouping. So hopefully with practice, this will just get easier and easier. We've already done it uh, once in class, well actually twice in class, um, and I want to review that. I want to go over that with you. I'm going to do a few problems. Um, I want you to have paper and pencil because those problems will be on your worksheet, but the first four we're going to do together. The last six I want you to do on your own, and remember I do have office hours from 11.45 to 12.30, so if you have any questions, feel free to come and join me. Bring, remember, bring your hot chocolate and your slippers, and we'll work on those together. All right, so we're going to start off, and remember, we're going to follow the same procedures, the same strategies and steps that we do when we just have um, unlike denominators until we get to and we see that the numerator on the first mixed number is smaller than the number um, of the other numerator. Then we've got a problem and we'll have to regroup. All right, so the first step is to find the common denominator. Well, right now we don't have a common denominator. We have fourths and we have tenths. Now remember, if you can do this in your head, if you can do the count bys in your head and you can figure what number you would use for the common denominator, you can go ahead and do that. But if you are not seeing that yet, I want you to write that out, okay? So we've got fourths and then we have tenths. Now remember, what we know about tenths, or what we know about tens, counting by tens, will be helpful here. We know that when we're counting by 10, we always have a zero in the ones column, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on. All right, so when we are counting by fours, and we come to that number that has that zero in the ones place, then we've got our answer. So we've got four, eight, 12, 16, aha, 20, all right? And then when we're counting by tens, we've got 10, 20. So 20 is gonna be our common, okay? So how many times did I count by fours? Well, I counted one, two, three, four, five, five times. So we do five times top and bottom. When I rewrite that, this is gonna be nine, and then we've got two times five is 10, four times five is 20. All right, so now we're looking at the next mixed number. We've got two and eight tenths, and we've got to create, remember, I forgot to say this, we're creating our equivalent fractions. See how those things always just come back? So those basic steps, or those basic things we learned at the beginning, we're, we're applying now. So we've got two, and then we've got one, two. So we're counting times two. So now we've got eight times two is 16, 10 times two is 20. Now we look at this. We're looking at the numerators. Let me write this a little bit better. That kind of smudged together. All right, so our numerators, we've got 10 minus 16. Well, if I have $10, I can't give you 16. So this isn't gonna make any sense. So I'm gonna have to regroup. Now, sounds hard. It's absolutely not hard. So what I'm gonna do to regroup is I have to regroup here. So I'm gonna take one whole from here so this is gonna, when I take one away from that nine, this becomes an eight. So well, what does that mean? What does one whole mean here? Well, I'm looking at the denominator. The denominator is gonna tell me what that means. That means 20 twentieths, okay? Because I've got twentieths here, 20 twentieths. Well, I'm gonna show you an easy way to do this. I'm gonna take my numerator and add it to my denominator. Well, 10 plus 20 is 30. And then I'm gonna keep that denominator. That denominator is so important when we're talking fractions and it wants to stay the same. As long as it's a common denominator, that guy's gonna stay the same. So I've got 20ths. That's all there is to it. Pretty simple, isn't it? Then all I have to do is rewrite this down here at the bottom, two, 16 20ths. Then I just follow the steps. Well, what are my steps? Well, subtract the whole numbers eight minus two, which is six, subtract my numerators, 
30 minus 16 is 14. If you have to write that out, don't worry about it. It's all right. Then I drag my denominator. All right, so now I've got 6 and 14 twentieths. Now, I have to, well, my last step is to simplify if I can or and or look for an improper fraction. Well, the numerator is smaller than the denominator, so I do not have an improper fraction. However, I do have two even numbers, so I know that they are divisible by two. So I've got my divided by two here. So I've got six, and then 14 divided by two is seven, because seven times two is 14, and 20 divided by two is 10, 10 times two is 20. All right, so either one of these answers is correct. All right, so remember, right here, all you're doing when you're regrouping is you're taking one away from the whole number, you're adding your numerator and denominator, that becomes your new numerator, and then keeping your denominator, and then following the same steps as you always do. All right, so um, make sure you get this written down and you're able to, you know, with fractions, I know that this, this is difficult to type into Google Classroom. So if you want to just write it on paper and then uh, bring it in to school, that would be absolutely okay with me. And then I'll just mark it in Google Classroom as completed and I'll give you your score from there. Okay, so nine and two fourths minus one and four fifths. Um, I just want to make another note too. Google Classroom is not very user-friendly with fractions when you're trying to type fractions into slides. Um, it's much more um, uncomplicated, I should say, when you're typing it on um, a Word document. So I feel your pain with that. So if you want to write these out, feel free. Nine and two fourths minus one and four fifths. Okay, so again, no common denominator. We've got to find that first. Creating equivalent fractions. So remember, that's something that we've been doing all along. So this isn't, it isn't difficult. We just have to remember those steps. And you have that in your notes. So if you forget, get your notes out. So we've got fours and fives. Well, what do I know about fives? Counting by fives, it's either going to be a zero or a five in the ones column. So it's something I know about fives. So I need to keep that in mind when I'm writing out the fours. So I've got four... 8, 12, 16, 20. Could it be? Could this be 20 as 2? Well, 5, 10, 15, 20. Sure could. All right. So this time, remember, we're, we counted 5 times, just like we did up here. So we multiply top and bottom times 5. Here, we counted 1, 2, 3, 4 times. Top and bottom times 4. All right, so we're gonna create our equivalent fraction. So we've got nine and 10 twentieths, looks familiar, minus one, four times four is 16, five times four is 20. And, hmm, this looks vaguely familiar. Um, we've got, the same problem. Hmm, how did that happen? All right, so let's go ahead and uh, we're doing the same thing, except we've got a one here. Hmm, so what do we know about these then? So we've got two fourths and four fifths. Let me see here, four fifths is that equal to 8 tenths? Hmm. Yes, it is. I can multiply times 2 times 2. So 4 fifths and 8 tenths are equivalent fractions. So right here and right here, um, these are equivalent. So the only difference is the whole number. I didn't even recognize that to begin with. And I had to look at my notes thinking, wait a minute, what's going on here? All right. I was a little shocked. Okay, so we've got 9 and 10 twentieths. Oh, I'm really excited now. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Math.
math nerd. Okay, 9 and 10 twentieths minus 1 and 16 twentieths. All right, so we need to change this up because 10 minus 16, can't do that. Numerators, not going to work. So I've got to take this and I'm going to change this into an 8. And then again, I'm going to add my 10 and my 20. My numerator and denominator, I've got 30. And then that denominator has got to stay the same. All right, and then we've got 1 and 16 twentieths. Now, look at this. This is going to be a piece of cake, right? We've got our whole numbers. 8 minus 1 is 7. Numerators, 30 minus 16 is 14. Denominators, drag it across. All right, now, I notice, look at that. It's just one more. Hmm. So, is it divisible by two? Well, of course. How do I know? They're both even. All right, 14 divided by two, 20 divided by two, I've got seven and seven tenths. Seven times two is 14, 10 times two is 20. That's an easy way to check to make sure you didn't make a simple mistake. All right, wow, this is really cool. This was an extra little bonus in here. All right, so I want you to go ahead, make sure you have that checked or written down. Um, and then we'll go on to our next problem. All right, I like finding those little gems in there, those little gems of things that we can learn from. All right, for number three, I'm gonna go ahead and write number three up here while you're finishing up. I've got five and one tenth minus three and one third. See now, math is all about patterns. And even amongst the problems themselves, you can find little patterns or little things that you're figuring out and learning. And, you know, just like I was shocked, I was really excited that there was something that I could use to um, actually get my answer for the next problem. Anything to make things simpler. You know, that's what Mrs. V likes. All right, so we've got five and one tenth minus three and one third. So again, our denominators. They are not the same. They are not in common. So we've got to find a common denominator. Well, when we've got tens, it's always a piece of cake because we count up by threes. We wait until we find a zero in the ones column, and we've got our answer. So we've got three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. I like the threes. Okay takes me back to my days of Schoolhouse Rock. All right, so 30. So I've got a zero in the ones, so I know I've got my, um, my common denominator. So how many times would I count up by tens to get 30? 10, 20, 30. I would count up three times. 10, 20, 30. One, two, three times, that's where I got that. So then I can change this, I can go ahead and change this, make my equivalent fraction. Keeping my whole number, 3 times 1 is 3, 10 times 3 is 30. All right, so here I counted up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times. All right, keeping my whole number, 1 times 10 is 10, 3 times 10 is 30. All right, now, right now on this whiteboard, I'm going to have to erase this. So I'm going to give you just a second to go ahead and write that down. While you're writing that down, I'm going to take a look at my numerators. So I've got 3 minus 10. So when I, when I get to that step, I'm going to have a problem because I can't, take, I can't have 3 and take 10 away from it. It's not possible. So I'm going to have to regroup. Regroup to subtract. So... Here, I'm going to take one whole from that, which is 30 thirtieths. Now, 30 thirtieths, but I can do a shortcut and make it easier. I can add my numerator and my denominator. 3 plus 30 would give me 33. Keep that denominator. That guy's important. And then rewrite this next one, uh, mixed number. And then go ahead and subtract like normal. 4 minus 3 is 1. 
33 minus 10. Well, I, I know that this is going to be simple because I'm just going to take 10 away from this. So I need to know my places. This is the tens place. So I take one away from that. That's going to be a 2. So that's going to be 23. Then keep my denominator. Now, can I reduce this? That's my next step. Um, I know this isn't an improper fraction because the numerator is smaller than the denominator, so I don't even have to worry about that. Now, when I add these together, is that um, sum divisible by 3? Because if it is, it's divisible by 3. So 2 plus 3 is 5. Now, there's nothing times 3 that gives me 5. This isn't even, so it's not divisible by 2. It's not looking good. So 23, is there anything, any two factors I can multiply together to get 23? 2 times 12 is 24, but it's not 23. Nope. 23 is actually a prime number. The only numbers that can multiply together to get 23 is 1 and 23 itself. So I'm good. So there's my answer. All right. We've got one more problem we're going to do together, and then I want you to try some on your own. Remember, if you have any questions, come to my office hours. Remember, hot chocolate and slippers. Not really a requirement, but it's, it's nice to have, especially on a snow day. All right, so we've got nine and a half minus four two-thirds. All right, no common denominator yet again. All right, halves and thirds. So, um, let's count by twos, two, four, six. Oh, I know this already, three, six. All right, six is gonna be our common denominator. So I count three times here. We've gotta go ahead and create our equivalent fraction. So we've got nine whole, one times three is three, two times three is six. All right, so, We've got, we counted two times over here to get our common denominator. So we've got four, two times two is four, three times two is six. All right, Houston, we have a problem. The numerators cannot be subtracted. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and make this eight. We've got six sixths. We've, so we're taking six sixths away from this, and so we can add our numerator and denominator because here's sixths. Three plus six is nine, keep that denominator, minus four and four sixths. All right, ready for the steps. Whole numbers, subtract those whole numbers. Eight minus four is four. Nine minus four is five. Drag my denominator sixths, four, and five sixths. All right, so I'm hoping you're understanding this. Now, the only thing that we're doing differently with these subtracting problems, we found that the numerators cannot be subtracted the, the way they are, so we need to regroup. So we go to that first mixed number. We take one whole away, add the numerator and denominator, that becomes the new numerator. Your denominator stays the same. Then you can subtract and do the steps just like we always have. So it is a new step in here, but if we think about it and we think about regrouping, it kind of just makes sense. So remember that my office hours are 11.45 to 12.30. Please feel free to come and ask any questions. There are six problems that I want you to do. Um, remember that you can do those on paper and you can bring those to class the next time we have class. Um, uh, I'm hoping that this is making sense. Uh, we'll keep practicing and going over this and I think you guys are gonna do just fine. All right, I want you to keep watching, keep thinking, Always stay curious, and hopefully, I'll see you at 11.45. Bye.